Hi, my name is Leela Higgins and I'm the manager of citizen science here at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. It's really cool because I get to uh, work and liaise with the scientists that we have here and making sure that all of our programs and projects, citizen science programs and projects, are really meeting the scientific goals and the education goals. At our museum, a citizen scientist is someone who participates. Um, so someone who's definitely participating, of course, in our projects, but also someone who is seeing nature all around them and recording their observations. And the main platform we use to do that is iNaturalist. We're using iNaturalist in a lot of ways, but I think the number one thing for me is that it helps us to build community. And that's what uh, our office is really about, is trying to make sure that we're building community. We have a section in the Nature Lab, uh, which is a exhibit about nature in Los Angeles. And there's a wall, which we call the Citizen Science Wall. And there's a giant screen and it's got iNaturalist on it. And so people can go in and search through the screen and like put in their zip code and see what observations have been submitted in their in their neighborhood and maybe if there aren't any maybe they'll get inspired to go home and, and make some of their own observations. I went around uh, throughout the LA area through various zip codes that were poorly represented on iNaturalist and documented what I could and so hopefully when people come to the museum or explore the website they'd be able to see something within their zip code within their neighborhood and feel like I naturalist is for them too. I was down there with a bunch of students who had been doing a spider project with their teacher and she had contacted me and we'd gone through some of the things that she needed to do to set up a spider project at her school and so the students were there we were looking on the screen and we were able to see some of the observations that they'd put in themselves and they just thought it was so cool to see their work up there on a screen in an exhibit at a museum. So it really is a low barrier for entry, and so that's the way that we try to get people in, and then we're funneling them into the individual projects that we have going on at the time. Citizen science and these photo-based citizen science projects are the next big revolution for numerous aspects of biological research. So I think it's the most important method for thinking about urban biodiversity, I think it's going to revolutionize the field of animal behavior because we're able to now get large numbers of observations of relatively rare natural history events. So I think it absolutely is going to really change the face of how we're approaching doing biological research. We train people in using iNaturalist and then encourage them to submit observations to one of several projects. We have the LA Nature Map, we have the Rascals Project, which I lead, Reptiles and Amphibians in Southern California, the Southern California Squirrel Survey, and, and Snails and Slugs Living in Metropolitan Environments, so slime. So we try to get people to contribute observations to all of those projects. And so then we can get you know urban biodiversity data from places that otherwise you know we scientists probably wouldn't be able to get that information. When I first explain iNaturalist to people, I tell them that this is a social network for naturalists, for people who like nature. And so this is a place where you can post photos of nature that you find interesting and people can actually provide you feedback on what it is and what it is you're seeing. And I really try to communicate that people's photos, when they post them to iNaturalist, become data points in a research project. And I found that when I use the word data point that people really respond to that. They seem excited that something that they see can be a data point in an actual scientist project and I think that motivates them to want to participate and to want to contribute and I think that makes them see the iNaturalist platform as something scientific and valuable but that they can be a part of and have access to and, then, and they're not afraid of it. I think iNaturalist has kind of really opened that up and I think it's been a void um, that, that has needed to be filled for a very long time. I, I remember growing up in LA and and, and uh, coming to the Natural History Museum or any science institution or a university and always being intimidated by scientists and feeling like they're not really approachable and really I'd have to kind of get my own degree, start my own project to kind of get involved in research. And so having iNaturalist um, and that ability to directly communicate with your participants has allowed you to kind of talk to a huge group of people at once through journal posts or one-on-one -on -one through messages um, or comments. And I think that's really key. What 
I found is that iNaturalist gives you someone's account of where that species is found. And if I want to go and collect it for a museum, for this museum, or just document that it's there, count individuals, try to see if it's an established population, I can go to that place and ground truth it, so to speak, right? I can go and see if that person's GPS coordinates were off, or I can contact them on iNaturalist, which I've done before, and, and literally said, can I come over to your house and collect these snails from your yard? And yes, I, can, I could, and went to somebody's house and collected some. And in that sense, it's been absolutely wonderful. It's really nice, you know, in the, in the age of modern technology, in the age of social media, when you're actually meeting a person in real life, after you have this relationship with them online, that's always something that gets me very excited. I mean, it's just, it's just a complete game changer. You think about our urban biodiversity efforts, we have so little understanding of what's going on in the urban areas in terms of, you know, what, what species are doing well, what species are doing poorly, how are their ranges changing over the course of urbanization. How are you ever, as a professional scientist, going to get you know, hundreds or thousands of records of where a particular species is found if you don't crowdsource that data collection effort through citizen science? And that's what we're doing with you know, Already people take photographs of nature, um, whether it's something interesting, something strange, and they're posting it to their social media accounts. So people are already doing this. So asking them to go one step further is not too big of an ask most of the time. It allows you to learn and appreciate the world that you live in and the biodiversity around us and I feel like that is only good. I really love taking pictures of wildlife with my phone and there's a real power to that when you can take the picture of something and then share it with scientists. That's when it takes it to that next level and anytime a teacher or an environmental educator can have a reason for kids to be using their phone and meet the kids where they're at and show them the power of constructively using uh, not just their phone, but also social media on their phone. I think that's a really good and healthy thing for us to be moving forward with in, in the world.